With real estate becoming more and more institutionalized each year, the competition among real estate firms to attract investor capital is stronger than it's ever been before, and especially with sites like Realty Mogul and CrowdStreet making direct investments in commercial real estate projects extremely easy and convenient, this has given potential real estate investors more options than they have ever had before to find the best opportunities out there in the market. And with these changes in the commercial real estate fundraising landscape, in order to compete for a limited number of capital commitments, every investment firm, both big and small, has been forced to create more compelling stories around the deals they're presenting to investors and why they're the right team to execute on that investment. So to help you navigate this process of raising capital, whether you're looking to put an investment memo together to pitch investors on your own deal, or you're working for a larger firm and trying to present opportunities to your investor base in a more attractive way, in this video, we'll walk through five of the most essential components of a real estate investment memo used by top real estate private equity firms to raise capital for their projects and how you can apply these same principles to your own deals to get investors to say yes to your projects much more often. So real estate is once again in favor for investors, both big and small. And with over $85 billion invested in real estate in just the first quarter of 2021 alone, there's no shortage for demand for commercial real estate products. However, with that demand from capital, there has also been a flood of new investment firms into the market over the past few years, which means that in order to stand out to a potential investor base as the best steward of their capital, it's more important than ever to have the ability to showcase a deal and your company in the most positive light possible. And this is where the investment memo comes into play, essentially acting as a document that pitches the deal you're acquiring or building to potential equity investors, detailing out the deal and the group that's going to be running that deal in detail. And in my own experience through working in real estate private equity and also through investing my own money into projects presented by various different sponsors, I've been able to spot a few patterns around the essential components that real estate private equity firms make sure to include in any investment memo they put together. And in this video, I wanted to talk through five of the biggest patterns I've seen in my own experience and some examples of each of these in action. So as number one on this list, a solid real estate investment memo is going to include a summary of the property itself and the key highlights and upside potential of the deal being presented. This portion of the memo is going to showcase basic information on the property, including things like the property address, the contracted purchase price, the number of units or total square footage of the property, the year the project was built, any major capital expenditures that are planned on the deal, and any notable commercial tenants that might be worth mentioning. But aside from just the basic property details, this section will also often include things like potential rental upside through mark-to-market leasing opportunities, upside in operations through the ability to decrease expenses or add additional streams of revenue at the property, any sort of further explanation around why a seller was motivated to sell or was willing to accept below market pricing or an off market transaction or any other notable deal structures that will serve to make the property a more profitable investment. Ultimately, this portion of the memo is meant to hook the potential investor from the start by highlighting some of the most appealing parts of the deal and showcasing the value potential in the property by executing on the business plan presented by the sponsor. Now, next up, aside from basic information about the property, a solid real estate investment memo will also include detailed information about the geographic market the property is located within and why that market makes sense to invest in from a real estate perspective. These sections often start out with a description of the market at a high level and then zoom in on the submarket and the specific micro location of the property from there. This is where the sponsor will often include information on major employers or universities in the market, net migration patterns in the market, national rankings for things like academics, economic conditions, or population growth, any new supply coming online in the future, or information on restrictions on new development in the city. And from there, the next step is to zoom in on the deal itself and to showcase how that individual property being built or acquired fits into the growth of that metro in general. 
And to do this, sponsors will also often include in this section a property's proximity to major local employers or universities, proximity to major highways or public transportation lines, new complementary developments in the area that would make the subject property even more attractive to potential tenants, any major employers entering the submarket for the first time or expanding within the area, or even foot traffic statistics or the number of cars per day that pass by the subject site. Again, the goal here is to present the deal as being ideally situated in a growing market with favorable supply and demand fundamentals, giving the investor assurance that they're highly likely to see organic rent growth and value growth over the entire investment time frame. Now on that note, when describing the submarket the property is located within, the next major point that private equity real estate firms will make sure to include in their investment memos is a section on comparable properties, specifically the rent comparables and sale comparables in the market. The goal here is to show two main things, that the property is tied up at a below market value compared to recent transactions in the market, and that there is room to run on rents based on what comparable properties are charging to tenants in the market right now. On the sales side, this is usually going to include about four to six comparable properties within about a five mile radius of the deal, ideally with a similar year built and number of units or total square footage, and this will include details on the date the property was sold and the property sale price on both a whole dollar and per unit or per square foot basis. And on the rent side of things, this is going to include similar information about each of the four to six properties being compared, but instead of the sale price of each property, this is going to include rent information, including per unit rents at comparable multifamily properties, or for commercial deals, recent notable leases signed in the submarket and detail on things like expense reimbursement structures, TI allowances, or free rent periods associated with each lease. Ultimately, an effective investment memo makes a compelling point that the property is being acquired below market value and makes it clear that the sponsor's assumption that they can raise rents is both valid and conservative, essentially making sure that investors know that the deal was carefully selected through the sponsor's vetting process over dozens or even hundreds of other opportunities that were passed on. Now, once rent and sale comparables are outlined, next up in the investment memo is generally going to be a snapshot of the property's financials. In this section, the sponsor will usually put together anywhere from about three to 10 years of cash flow projections that detail out specific revenue and expense line items, annual interest and principal payments on the loan, or any other major assumptions that will affect those cash flows, including things like assumed market rent growth, any assumed vacancy factor, or the market leasing assumptions being used in the model on expiring commercial leases. This section also usually includes a table which details out the sources of capital to fund the project and the uses of that capital to execute on the business plan, any details on a construction or renovation budget, any partnership level fees like an acquisition fee, disposition fee, construction management fee, or asset management fee, and often the projected investment returns that investors can expect to achieve on the deal, specifically the IRR, equity multiple, and cash on cash return. The partnership structure itself is also often mentioned here in detail, walking through the percentage of the equity requirement that the sponsor plans to invest alongside its limited partner investors, and the waterfall structure the partnership will be subject to, including any sort of preferred return on the deal and promoted interest to the sponsor once that preferred return is hit. The goal here is to make sure that investors feel comfortable with the assumptions the sponsor is making to arrive at their projected returns and to be able to see for themselves what cash flow of the property might look like, assuming the business plan is executed as intended. And finally, last but not least, a solid real estate investment memo will also include information about the sponsor itself or the active managing partner responsible for running the deal. This section usually includes things like a sponsor's experience in the real estate industry as a whole, any unique operational expertise that makes the sponsor the best fit for executing on the specific business plan they're proposing, any similar properties in the market or submarket the company owns and operates, and ideally the company's success in delivering on or exceeding investor return expectations in the past. 
This section of the memo has one primary goal, to make sure an investor trusts the sponsor to do what they say they'll do. Ultimately, passive real estate investors are entering a partnership with the sponsor and investors want to feel confident that they can rely on the individual or team they're investing with to be honest, diligent, and highly skilled at both managing real estate and growing investor capital. So whether you're looking to put together an investment memo to pitch your own deals to equity investors, or you're trying to improve the pitch decks you're currently using within the company you're working for, I hope these points help give you some new ideas around things you might want to include in your next investor package and the things that most real estate private equity firms will highlight when putting together investment materials to raise equity for their projects. And if you're looking for some additional training on the number side of things to help you build your financial analysis skill sets so you can add your own pro forma projections to a memo like this, or if you're just looking for some pre-built templates to get you started, as always, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking the CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get instant access to our entire library of pre-built acquisition, development, and waterfall models for multifamily, office, retail, and industrial properties. And you'll also have access to private one-on-one -on -one email based career coaching. If you're looking to break into a top real estate, private equity brokerage or lending shop and want some additional personalized feedback on your own unique career scenario. And if you like this video and want to see more content on this channel on deal presentation and raising capital, make sure to hit the like button to let me know and let me know in the comments if I missed anything that you or your company make sure to add to every memo you put together when raising equity for your deals. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week and I'll see you in the next video.